Hey everyone, Richard here, and today I thought it might be a good idea to take a break from serious-ish content and just make a fun video taking a look at what I think are the worst weapons in Killing Floor 2. Right now, I think that most weapons are reasonably viable, but there are a few out there that just insist on being crap in contrast to their peers. This list is in no particular order, so with that all out of the way, let's get started. Starting us off is one of the oldest and simplest firearms in the game, but one that just struggles to get the job done. The Dragon's Wrath Trench Gun, while possessing serviceable damage, is just inferior pound for pound to its counterparts. The slow fire rate, small magazine, and huge pellet spread mean that it just lacks the consistency of other firebug and support weapons. It also really struggles to find a home, as it isn't crazy effective against either large or trash zeds. For weaker enemies, the Cock and Burn is a much cheaper and more powerful option. Against the big boys, the Helios far surpasses the Trench Gun and is overall a better primary weapon. Using it on support means it's just competing against better and more flexible shotguns like the HZ-12, M4, and even the Vlad Nail Gun. While yes, there have been some valiant attempts at fixing it, the Trench Gun just fails to live up to other weapons in either the support or firebug roster. The next weapon on the list is a conceptually unique weapon that fails to stack up yet again to its counterparts. The Seeker 6, a missile launcher which would seem more at home in Doom or Unreal, just does not measure up. Firing six independently targeted micro-missiles, the Seeker is an admittedly more flexible option than the RPG-7, but if it wasn't such a meme, you'd probably be better off just burning your dosh. In a game like Killing Floor, flexibility is not always a virtue. Specialization, especially in team games, is very important, and the Seeker 6 trades some of the best demo abilities for some marginal adaptability. The RPG, however, can be used against any size target with relative ease. It is one of the few weapons that, given enough room, can be used against Scrakes and Flesh Pounds, as well as Crap Tier Zeds. The Seeker, well, it can do group parties, but it struggles to do solo engagements, at least on Suicidal and above. Even the MGL is probably a better option for the demo, as it can still handle flesh pounds. Perhaps its only saving grace is the absolute meme potential it has during Zed time with the Destroyer of World skill. If you have a good commando and sharpshooter on your team for lots of Zed time, maybe consider taking this, otherwise leave her at home. Number 3 on the list was something that I thought may have had some potential when it released, but just ended up being a bit disappointing. The HRG Buckshot was a novel attempt at a shotgun revolver, but just turned into a subpar support sidearm. Try saying that three times fast. While it can fire fast and has a high theoretical DPS, its high recoil makes it a tough beast to tame. While I'm not saying it doesn't make sense for a shotgun pistol to have high recoil, it is still poor weapon design from a game perspective. Even as a filler shotgun, it has limited usage, as you'd be better off filling the extra weight in your loadout with a medic pistol. Most competitive builds, yes, I'm using that term loosely, don't even consider the hand cannons as an option. They're just a pain to use and feel woefully underpowered compared to its competition. Even if you can tame the recoil on them, which is totally possible, the high spread factor, similar to the HC-12, means getting all the pellets to hit a flesh pound or scrake's head is a total pipe dream. In almost any circumstance, just buying the HC-12 is a better option. More pellets, more ammo, more damage, and more control at a cheaper price means a better shotgun overall. Weapon number 4 on my list is a fun but kind of pointless addition, the MKB-42. A relic of the Second World War, this prototype assault rifle is probably the weakest offering from the commando tree, although you could argue the L85 is just as pointless. While bad isn't the first word to come to mind when I think of the MK, it's certainly not the last. To put it simply, its high per shot damage makes it kind of pointless in the commando's arsenal. Against Trash, it really performs worse from an efficiency standpoint compared to the AK-12 or Medic AR. Against large Zeds, its low DPS means the FAL, AK-12, and SCAR still outperform it as well. High damage is not a bad thing, but when the extra damage doesn't reach any important breakpoints, why even bother? The only time it might be useful is for one-shotting cysts with body shots, but it's a cyst. It's the easiest enemy to headshot in the game. Now, I can see why people do like this weapon. The extra per-shot damage does make body-shotting enemies down in a pinch a bit easier, 
The weapon is also a visual treat and just feels beefy to fire. If you're going for looks, the MKB ain't a bad option. However, if you're looking for effectiveness, the AK-12, Medic AR, SCAR, and FAL are far better options. Our final weapon is one that many of you have probably guessed if you watch my content for a while. The Hemogoblin, yes, that's its name, not the Hemoglobin, is the finale for this list. But Richard, I hear you say, it debuffs enemies and makes them slower and vulnerable and easier to kill. You're right, citizen, but so do Desert Eagles when I unload them into a Flesh Pound's face. All joking aside, the Goblin's biggest problem is that the meta is so focused around quick takedowns that the debuffs really have limited usefulness. Against bosses, sure, they're more helpful, but wouldn't better healing and, by extension, team buffs be just as helpful? I think focusing on buffing teammates with more movement speed, damage, and resistance nets an overall better result than making Patty run a little bit slower. For the Hemogoblin, I'm actually not sure what I would like changed with it. I feel like the problem is less to do with the weapon itself and more to do with the game overall. A weapon that debuffs enemies is actually a pretty cool idea and maybe it can be useful in the future as I would love that. Otherwise, I would advise sticking with the 401 and 501 as a better option for the medics. Well, that's my list, and I'm sure I pissed off about 50% of the people that watch this, so if I did, let me know why you think I'm wrong in the comments below. I do like to break out of my echo chamber every once in a while. Also, as a heads up, I am working my way into doing some sponsorships, but I want to know your feedback on what your concerns might be with that. Don't worry, I'm not going to be doing any mid-roll ads, and I'm going to avoid sponsors I don't personally trust. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and even if you didn't agree, I hope I at least made you laugh. If you like my content, please consider subscribing or joining the channel as a member. Check out my community tab to vote on the next Killing Floor 2 video, but until then, happy hunting.